Hello, 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 everyone. This is Disgruntled Elk coming back after a nice weekend off from uh, from Magic um, with, surprise, another Hammer Time video. So not last weekend, but the weekend before, um, I did end up taking down an RCQ. I punted in the top four of the one the day before, so I was glad I was able to, uh, <laughs> to redeem myself there. But yeah, so I'm running something very similar um, for that list and the one I actually put out recently on Patreon. Um, I was actually on four Hushbringer, one to Fairy, two Lavinia, and then um, I had moved one skill to the main, cut the second Mem Knight, so I'm down. To, I was down to one, um, and added the fourth Hushbringer as well. And that is primarily because the meta I was facing in the pseudo local area was basically no living end at all. So we cut the relic, um, and then all like way less Murktide than there should be. Like at the two I went to prior to the one I spiked, there were maybe four Murktide decks total. And so, you know, I was like, we can go lighter on Memnite. We can go uh, lighter on those kind of things. And then it was pretty heavy on four colors. So I just wanted the fourth Hushbringer to kind of hammer things home. Um, other than that, nothing crazy. If you are expecting a ton of burn, I do like trimming one random fetch for a third Seachrome Coast, but that's about it. Um, I think it's fine to go down to five. Uh, zeros. I think Ornithopter is definitely better than Memnite right now. I think you can beat Blue Red Murktide without without Memnite, but I like I like having the extra zeros anyway. Um, but yeah. Anyway, nothing too crazy. I cut Relic. I guess that's the question people are going to ask. I cut Relic for a couple reasons. One, I don't I don't think you need it. I just don't think you need it. Like the only graveyard deck currently that we really care about that I'd bring in Relic very actively against is Living End. And oftentimes Living End can just beat the Relic. If you play it out super early, then they can blow it up and then start going off. Um, and if, you know, if they, uh, if you wait to play the Relic, then it's tapping ability doesn't do anything. So you're just nuking the yard and that's fine. Like that's pretty good. But generally against them, I find that it's Lavinia's, Spell Pierces, things like that that are going to do the trick. So if I'm expecting a bunch of Living End, I will just play, you know, two or three Lavinia, probably maybe like a Teferi or a Meddling Mage to diversify, and then kind of go from there. I like Blacksmith Skill. I, I'm always so fine if you want to throw like one or two Blacksmith Skills in the main to trim find some room in there but um i've been a pretty big fan of just playing four in the sideboard if you are going to play blacksmith skill or spell pierce in the main and you're only going to play one i'm a bigger fan of blacksmith skill that way you can always just basically fetch basic planes game one because you don't need to worry about blue until the reality chip yeah anyway i will see y'all in round one we're going to run through a league with this all right we are back for round one with a hand that's uh not very good if any of these zeros is a second land, of course, this hand's great. We're on the draw. Uh, nope. Uh, this hand, however, is quite, quite awesome. Um, I'm going to throw back the Cauldra because it costs seven and go from there. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, unless I see something real funky, I will lead with Sentinel, of course. Um, okay, so definitely going to lead with Sentinel because they could just have Spell Pierce up as well. Just going to lead with Sentinel here. Um, this also means that if we, even if we don't hit a white source, we can technically deploy Paladin next turn. We probably won't. It is, uh, it is good to know because of course we can play Paradise Metal for zero, tap the Urza Saga to equip it to the Sentinel and tap both for the Paladin. Probably not what we're doing. We'll see what they do. So I don't hate just going Urza Saga, Sigardizade. If they have Spell Pierce, that's fine. Um... But if they have Counterspell, I would rather they use the Counterspell on an aid than a Paladin down the line. Plus, we draw a card off of it. But I think we start the turn the easy way and just crack in for one, get our free point of damage. Mm, yeah, and of course, we do play out the Saga first. Very little reason not to. Okay. And no Counterspell. Pretty big fan of that. So they probably have like, huh. This is interesting. So they could have Removal Spell plus Pierce, but all right, just nothing on two. So I don't, I have no idea. So I guess they're probably holding up Archmage Charm now. I don't know. This is a strange I'm gonna start here. Um, and I think I'm fine just cracking in. So these are the games against Murktide where it's fine to just kind of hang back. So shooting the Sentinel. So I think they're trying to set up an Archmage Charm turn. So they did pay the one, that's fine. I think I will just fetch now planes and that's fine it's dead as for sentinel got in for a couple points of damage they could merc tide here as well which i wouldn't be super happy about but we're also not in terrible shape yeah it looks like a merc tide so now we get to make a construct 
So they are F6, it looks like. Um, so I'm just gonna make another struct here. Okay. Well, hmm. <laughs> um, it's, this is hard, right? Because we can get a hammer. I think we're like getting right. So you can get a hammer, a drum, or a shadow spear. The, those are kind of the the options. Um, I think we're getting a hammer and putting it on the sick construct. Because if we get a hammer and put it on the sick construct, then we can flash in Paradise Mantle, puts it on this construct for free, and then we can tap Hollowed Fountain and that to play Paladin and move the hammer. I don't hate that. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. It's only a five, five. So we have time. We don't have to jam anything in here. See, so yeah, I think we just play out another saga. Pass the turn. Like even if they Archmage Charm here, we're not in terrible shape, especially if they're just going it's fine. Oh, okay. So we can lead with Memnite here, probably. Or we can go Paladin, right? Um, so if we play Paladin, then we have, we can play Ink Moth, and then this still makes a mana. Yeah, so I think we probably play the Memnite first, see if that sticks. And then I think we play this Ink Moth, because that acts as an anthem for these two. And then, so yeah, I think we just crack, in. we're certainly cracking in with this one. Yeah, just this one, because we want the untapped creature for the Paradise Mantle. Okay. Eat your dude. Um, just trying to think because I don't know if there's even a reason to play out the paladin here. How weird. I think we're just supposed to pass. What a strange game. Yeah, because they, they just passed without using three mana. Yeah, okay. And that's, yeah. It's hard for that deck to beat a saga. Uh, hard for that deck to beat a saga just because, you know, and just make make a 14-14. Uh, so this sideboard, pretty straightforward. Needle and the blacksmith skills. These are all great. Um... If I did have Relic in the board, I would bring it in here because we saw the Dragon Rage Channeler. Um, and so five in, and we're cutting at least three of these Ornithopters, uh, probably a Paradise Mantle because we are bringing in more of these tricks. And then one Steel Shaper's Gift. Uh, it's also reasonable to cut the Cauldra here, but I, I like the Cauldra as an additional threat, especially since post-board we have the three Givers and the four skills to... All right, um, we are on the draw. They kept seven. We have Hollowed Fountain. Urza Saga, Blacksmith Skill, Memnite. I think this is a keep. It's not obviously the best hand, but if we hit a second White Source or a Cigar to Zade, hand gets real good real quick. Mm, okay. Um, shock this in. Play Springleaf Drum. Play Memnite. And question is, do you play the Spear? If we play the Spear, then we have Metalcraft. But I think I'd rather play Paladin plus Shadow Spear next turn. So... I think we can I think we can hold off. Obviously we're a little softer to Blood Moon than we'd like to be this game, but I think that's fine. Um I will skill here actually. Make sure we're using our mana. Uh we won't have a lot of extra white here either. So I think it's pretty reasonable to just do this. So we're gonna go Saga, Paladin. Yep, that's fine. Counterspell it. And I will deploy the spear here. Uh we just wanna get as many lands as we can or any as many artifacts as we can into play to make these constructs bigger um so if they get a basic here we're probably getting blood moon which sucks but it is what it is um <laughs> yep yeah. okay so blood moon it is which means we're actually still alive because we can still deploy this stone forge mystic and then if we okay e on one sure okay smart just popping it now so land here is great obviously it's not really what we're looking for but don't hate it either. Yes. And pretty sure we just get a hammer here because we have the, the paladins. All right, crack in for one. That's heads up the opponent to just go ahead and pop the EE now. Uh, so they might have Blood Moon now. Okay, they didn't have Blood Moon. That's great news because if they have Blood Moon now, like we're probably dead. Um, okay, so they just, are they gonna play out the Murktide Regent, max it? So now we get to float mana we probably go get a yeah so we float mana go get drum play paladin play hammer draw a card no yeah draw a card and then that's also metal craft because of um yeah so we get drum memnite and then we are going to be able to play and of course we are going to put this we want to put the uh the pallet or the hammer on a two drop because that way it can get archmage charmed yes we will draw a card or is a saga that's a good card and we'll crack in for a casual 11 damage they're just taking it um there i think i was probably supposed to move the hammer to the paladin i think i threw it e on two is pretty gross 
Um, okay, fine. Because we still have the backup paladin and ragavan. Sure. We're still like honestly in good shape, right? Uh, so we can go find that can resolve. So we can go paladin off of memnite springleaf drum hollowed fountain um and then we probably play ginger brute put the hammer on the ginger brute and attack and then move the hammer to the paladin yeah that seems pretty good and they have to block and i think i am fine throwing away the uh the ginger brute here just to protect the paladin because they don't really have a good way to get this paladin off the board okay you you got it just uh just trying to draw into something else cool so you saw their opponent had two engineered explosives um expressive iteration they had unholy heat and counter spell and a pretty quick murktide and they still lost like the reality is if you keep an aggressive hand that forces them to have interaction, especially if you have it backed up by Urza Saga. It's just so hard for them to uh, to grind through that. But yeah, I'll see y'all in round two. Cool. All right, we uh, made the bold decision to lose the die roll again. Uh, luckily, our opponent is milling to six because this hand is unplayable. Uh, this hand is also pretty terrible. So, okay, this hand is great, actually. Um, so we're probably bottoming the Hollowed Fountain. And this is tough. I think we are going to bottom the Paladin and the Hollowed Fountain and hope this gets there. All right, all right. I don't hate it. We probably could have bothered, bottomed a hammer, but if we're going in on the, uh, the Cigar to Zade line, then I like having additional ammunition to fire off. Uh, okay, Rift Bolt. Okay, burn. Just just straight burn. Love to see it. This hand might be a little bit slow for that matchup, but uh, and of course I want to deploy this ahead of an Eidolon because we just saved life that way. Looks like an idol. Yep, okay. Oh man. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think, I think we're just gonna play the stone forge out. I'm gonna take two, that's fine. Um, I don't hate getting a reality chip and the, reali <laughs> the reality, the reality is that this Urza Saga is gonna go off. Um, so getting Shadow Spear could be challenging. Um, I like that chip is also a body that we can just cast here. Um, but I don't hate getting a Shadow Spear. I think that's pretty reasonable. They're also much more likely to kill the Stoneforge if we if we grab the Shadow Spear. I mean, they're pretty likely Stoneforge, no matter what what we get there, right? Certainly not blocking. I know, I'm, <laughs> I've got very, very bold decisions here. There is a consideration of blocking in case of, I don't know, what, what could they? Oh, okay. Whoa, oh, okay, all right, um, so. We are going to go to five off of these, trying to think. So if they have exactly bolt, bolt for our face, then we do die because we're going to go to eight, then four. I guess Boros Charm does it too. So let's go ahead. We're just going to do this pre-combat. Yep. I'm not worried about playing to round Deflecting Palm game one, obviously. Uh, if they have Deflecting Palm game one, then Palm game one. <laughs> I'm, I'm content losing to that. So we're going to throw the Shadow Spear on the stone. Yep. And... I don't think it gets better if we wait. Question is, do we fetch? If we fetch and cast this, then we go to four. So I think we just hammer. Like I said, if they have bolt bolt, then I am content losing to that. Skull crack me. So I go to two and now we die. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking if there was a way, well, actually they're dead. Yeah, because they take two from the skull crack, duh. Okay. <laughs> and then they had to take one from the Sunbaked Canyon. All right, I will go to two. Okay, thanks Sunbaked Canyon. I appreciate the uh, the assist there. That was uh, that was a tight one. I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I played it right, but you know there are a lot of different decisions you could have made that game. Let me know if you uh, would have made a different decision. But yeah, so game two. Let's see how we're sideboarding. Uh, the skills and the pierces are obviously great because they answer. Uh, they protect the Shadow Spear, and the Shadow Spear is usually how you're winning. Um, Culture is always a card that I'm tempted to bring out, and then I'm kind of always sad when I bring out because it makes it a lot easier to play around Deflecting Palm by deploying multiple, um, by deploying multiple kind of reasonable threats across multiple bodies against Deflecting Palm. Uh, I like all the Steel Shapers gifts because they act as extra copies of Shadow Spear. Um... And then we could trim a mantle instead of like one sentinel, probably fine. But mantle does let us go off and I'm a fan of going off. So whatever, this is fine. Okay, what do we got? We have a ginger brute and Urza sagas. Uh, I think we can do better. Um, This is a keep though. It's not like the most exciting hand, but it's fine. And I think we are bottoming drum and then we play out. Drum's also a second. I think it's drum. 
and then we go planes aid let's uh i think we try that could be gift too i think gift is fine to yeah it's fine because this um this can grab a hammer to put on an ink moth and then we have the blacksmith skill to protect yeah so we're gonna go probably turn one drum but it might be turn one aid we will see what we draw all right give me a land, a land. all right oh okay well <laughs> That made things a little bit simpler. Um, so we can go Saga, Drum, Ornithopter, Aid. I don't think we want to do that, though. I do like getting the Saga online as soon as possible. We could also go Saga, Drum, Ornithopter, Hold Up blacksmith skill which i don't hate um probably just put the a play right yeah let's just um well it is super bad if they blow up the ornithopter right if so if they blow up ornithopter then we play ink moth next turn and then we can still kill them but i think we are supposed to hold up skill here because just making making a three three on turn two seems pretty good okay so spirit is and we could just like also eat one of these attackers which is probably correct arid mesa and gear seal paladin that's a good one too um i think we'll block we'll block the ugly goblin guy and get it off the table yep and kill your goblin guide take three right um making a three three seems really good i'm i'm about it and i'm fine just blocking with the three three if they if they kill it i'm fine with that we've drawn a lot of lands off this goblin guy this is great we'll block the goblin guide because that thing doesn't have prowess okay interesting you'll like making construct is the question is, what are we getting here? We are probably getting Ginger Brute because it lets us gain life, if nothing else. Um, and we already have the Shadow Spear in hand. Yeah, like, I don't even want to hammer them this game. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, I am cracking in for five here, though. I'm pretty happy. Or six, I guess. Yeah, this just plays around their sideboard cards so much better. Like, they're Deflecting Palms. They're, they're you know, Smash to Smithereens. All those cards just play so much worse against just a 5-5 five, five and a 1-1 one, one than they do, you know, a 15 power single attacker. Deflecting Palm. I'm sure they'll pick the Construct. So we'll take 5, go to 9. And then assuming we're not dead, we're in really good shape. Because we're probably not even attacking with the Ginger Brute anymore. We're probably just holding it up uh, to gain three just on the fly. And then attacking with both trucks probably. It's not unreasonable to also just like throw the Shadow Spear on the Ornithopter or an Ink Moth Nexus. Which is funny. No blocks. Okay. So if we fetch, play Paladin. We go to eight. They have two cards in hand. Both spells for sure. Or four cards in hand. Um, we play Paladin. We cannot crack the Ginger Brute, so I think we are not supposed to in with the Paladin. I think we're just supposed to play the Marsh Flats and attack with two five fives. And let's see if they block. Whichever one they block, I'll throw the Shadow Spear off. Um, don't think it makes a huge difference. We might put it on. Yeah, we'll put it on this construct. Because this way, if they like deflecting palm it instead, mash, gross. Okay, so the question is, do we crack the ginger brute in response? We don't need to crack it in response, right? Yeah, we go to six. They take five. Probably supposed to animate the inference. I think we do crack the ginger brute right now um, because it plays around land and having two, two bolts. Yeah, go to eight. Eight's not a bad number. Four, so that's eight damage. We can turn it into 10 damage very easily. If we spike an artifact, they're dead. Of course, losing the Shadow Spear makes me very sad, but I think they are conceding. Either that or Magic Online's just lagging. Eh, maybe it's... All right, we're back for round three. Now, we're on the draw. I think it's a keep. Uh, any hammer, and we have a lot of them, is a really good draw. And we can just like throw everything Oh, uh, an opponent mold of four. So it might be playing against like Belcher or Tron. So yeah, hopefully we draw one of our... I don't really want to draw Saga as the hammer, but any of the four hammers, four stone forge, two gifts, all seem real good. So 10 natural draws at hammer, uh, or if we just draw Saga turn one. Uh, so they mold to four. So yeah, my guess would be Tron. Okay, cool, cool. Seems correct. That's not really the artifact we want here, but we're going to do this. See if we can find a hammer off the top, please. One time. Opponent actually knows what they're doing with Tron, clearly. That's why they mold a four. That's what you do. Oh, oh, it's E-Tron. Okay, I, I don't. Um, Interesting, okay. So I'll crack in. Taking it. Okay, I'm gonna play out this pallet in here. 
So maybe the last card in their hand is actual natural Tron piece. It was a keep on four, so like could be any number of things. But I like playing out the Paladin. Yeah, okay, so they're getting the complete Tron. They could be getting Blast Zone as well, no. And then are they playing Chalice on one? That'd be real grip. That would make me very sad. Um, So we get to crack in for three here. Once again, just uh, hoping to find a hammer. We'll play out the Sentinel and the Giver here because that does at least mitigate the damage. Okay, so block and kill the Memnite probably for damage. No, okay. Uh, I should have played the Sentinel first, but all right. Hmm. Well, all right. Probably just crack in for What's the difference. I'll crack in five. I'd rather just like pretend at this point. Play out the other Paladin. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll have a two turn clock. All right, yeah, you have, you have a billion mana. That's a good card. Um. Stoneforge Mystic, please. Please. It's like, I'll just take five if they attack. <sighs> um, I think we just play this out. There's no reason. I don't think there's a reason to attack here. I mean, they have one card in hand. They can just make a construct and block two creatures. Uh, yeah, probably not. We're hoping to just draw a Stoneforge. I'll take a Paradise Mantle as well, because Paradise Mantle generates effectively one billion mana. Um, of course, because it adds a mana for each creature we have in play. And then we can just cast Cauldra, and this would draw six cards that sequence, which would be pretty good. <laughs> this has been an unfortunate series of draw steps, but opponent mold to four. I'm not going to complain too much. Mm, sure. I feel like they'll pay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. They can't really attack with the Construct. They can attack with the Smasher, but there we go. Um, so the question is, what are we getting here? And I think Reality Chip is very tempting. Um, but I think we're just going to get Paradise Mantle here because this one will draw three cards for zero mana. Um, we'll put it there, whatever. Yield, yes. Okay, so we can gift here. Um, I'm trying to think. So if we gift, I think we just gift for a hammer, right? Yeah, keep it, keep it real simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana, eight, cast the hammer. So I think we just go, yeah, I'm fine playing that. Uh, do we want to move it there? Probably not. And cast this. Doesn't matter here, luckily. Yep, we will draw three more cards, please. <laughs> Those were fine, I guess. Um, I guess the stone effects are really good. Okay, and so this actually generates an additional mana because now we can move this here. So technically, Cauldre costs six here. Um, now we get to... Um, we can play Hammer, or we can play Stoneforge. Um, so we can play out another Stoneforge, but I think we just play out the Hammer here. Seems pretty clean. Um, yeah. Hopefully we draw like a zero. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> Come on! Um, can't really get Pro Colorless, but we can hit the Ugin. We probably hit the Ugin. Wow, those draws. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Um, okay, so now we can move the hammer to the sentinel so that we're probably going to draw a card. The cauldra to the memnite, probably. Um, and then paradise mantle to the giver. I feel like one of the only ways we lose is if uh, if they get us with like a blast zone. So now we can we can protect against that. Yeah, this is we don't need to make the giver uh you know bigger. Uh, and so this Stoneforge is probably going to go get a, yeah, so Blast Zone. This Stoneforge will probably go get a Reality Chip, Chain Off. Yeah, I thought they were going to play Blast Zone last turn, but ooh, eight. That's great. But it is what it is, I guess. Oh, and they tap the zone for it. Okay. So now they have to do minus two here. And then we take nine, 10, 11, potentially. So they did two. Yep, that is the correct number. All right, it's edge. Eugene, you got it. Five. We'll see what we draw. We are also almost like hard equipping that, so <laughs> that's fine. Um, we're one shy of hard equipping, so make a stone forge. Probably get a shadow spear. I don't hate getting a chip. Yeah, I mean shadow spear seems pretty free. This will be one, two, three four, five, it'll be a five, five. So we can get the shadow spear and we can play an aid pretty freely here. 
And they don't have cards. We were supposed to get... <laughs> I forgot that we didn't have hammer in hand. Um, yeah, so we have the aid. They're forced to tick down the Ugin. Um, this isn't that bad, though. I think we equip. Is there a reason not to equip? It can force us to take action before we want to. That's a real reason. Popping the blast zone now. Thought not, Seer. What a jerk. Okay. Um, do we just let this happen? We probably let this happen. Yeah. Because we need to make a construct, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because they can just tick the... All right, buy Shadow Spear. They still... Uh, I guess the blast zone means that they don't have to tick down the Ugin. They can tick the Ugin up on like a Memnite. See, so we've seen six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven lands. Ah, that's like half. <laughs> We, we've also seen about half of our deck. The, uh, the multiple ancestral recalls off the Paladin were, uh, were problematic. Okay. Yep. Uh, Memnite down. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Maybe we just take this. Go five. We make a construct. It becomes, let's see, one, two, three, four. It'll become a four, four. And then we can move the Cauldra to it. Um, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll be one shy of making, moving it. Um, I think we take this and that's fine-ish, I guess. Yeah, well, no, 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 because we can just float mana, right? Yeah, we can just float mana off of the saga. I mean, or we can just make another giant creature. Making another giant creature seems pretty good. And we can animate here because now they have to, um, yeah, because now they have to. Um, and we can just crack in. We can also crack in at the Ugin if we really want, right? I think we're just supposed to attack them with the Ink Moth. Attack them with the Ink Moth um, and kind of go from there. Pop it. Is that all the hammers? I think that is all. The no, no, we have two more hammers. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, just probably play the planes. Equip here, since we don't care about the Stoneforge living at all. And pass the turn. Yep, so... We still have another gift in the deck. We have two more stone forges and two more hammers. I think we have, we're like five of 31 to just rip another hammer naturally. Okay, so are we just trading off here? I do believe we are. Hmm, they kill the Ink Moth and that gets rid of our opportunity to win. Weird, and these die anyway. Yeah, whatever. So trade our boards. Um, if they want, they can kill the Ink Moth, but at least I get to draw a card. So that's like pretty, it'll be another one. It's not another one. Let's see if they choose to shoot. I hope they don't. That was a bad block. I was definitely just supposed to block. Yep. 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 Good play opponent. Good play. Gross. Yeah, it's pretty gross. I think we're dead. Ooh. Okay. So what are we getting here? Yes, of course we are getting something. Um, I think we just get a reality chip here. Damn. All right, well, it didn't matter because they, they had the answer to the chalice anyway, but kind of like, now if they minus, all right, well, don't want that. And I need to start playing a little bit quicker. They are really incentivized to um, not tick tick down, but maybe they do. That that will do it. All his dust will, in fact, kill me. Let's uh let's see game two. Maybe, maybe we'll draw a hammer in the top left. Okay, March is great because it answers, um, it answers chalice, obviously, that's the big one. I'm always tempted to bring these in, but I don't think it's correct. Blacksmith skill, not great because they do exile with Ugin, um, but you can bring in like some number if you want. Cards I don't like, Memnite is pretty, Esper Sentinel is also medium. I don't hate cutting like one from though. Yeah, of course, Ornithopter is great because it does let us win through a ensnaring bridge. Um, for that reason, we might actually want, I, I don't actually do. All right, let's try this. Hand was so close last game. And we, we got punished for uh for not uh looking for a hand with hammer. Hand felt pretty f I don't know. Let me know what you think. Tell me tell me why I'm wrong. I'm fine with that. Givers are good. Mantle can be good, obviously, because how much mana it can generate. Yeah, we drew Alright, so Moda decided to crash. Let's uh let's see if it wants to load up and let me play. Or if it's just gonna like randomly time me out. Uh yes, I'll be on the play. So we lost another 30 seconds to a minute. Yes. Please? Please. All right, well, I'm glad y'all are able to witness this with me. Yes. Um, this hand is not great. Throw it back. This hand's better. Probably run out Sentinel on one, and we're just going to hope to draw a hammer again. I think we bottom the Mesa. We'll play the Sentinel on one because if we rip a aid or a, uh, a hammer, then we still get to go aid hammer. Um, and also because they play you know, uh, their expedition maps and things like that. The last draw cards. I don't hate just having the Sentinel. Chalice on zero, not paying. Okay. Well, I'm glad I trimmed some of my zeros. Dismember. Okay, sure. 
Um, and I am actually going to play out the aid here and then pass because they clearly do have a, a chalice, right? They clearly have another chalice. And so if they do, then I'll flash in the, the spear. Okay. Okay. Pure Seal Paladin. Um, now, as long as they don't, I don't want to say it, but as long as they don't have a thing, I get to play Reality Chip next turn and potentially go off. Last sounds pretty obnoxious. Uh, looks okay they did not love it love it we did bring in needle right yes we did um so we'll start here sealed yes okay play the free land off the top don't want that um i don't think there's a reason to take the extra damage um so we can just throw this into the chalice yep and six all right opponent do you also have a removal spell for the pure seal paladin plus three and tap right Okay, play that off the top. I'm just gonna clear cards, it's fine. Okay, that one I'm gonna save because if we do find a march, then we can potentially kill the chalice and go pretty hard. Um, yep, play the stone forge. Ooh, okay, yeah, um, don't want that. Um, I don't hate cauldra here either. And just play another saga and pass the turn. Playing a little bit quicker this game. Uh, so we're going to make a 3-3 three, three and a turn. So they clearly kept off the back of two chalices. Who knows? Maybe they have more dismembers in their hand. If they do, they do. So we can let this one resolve. Okay. Um, I think we get a needle and name blast zone. Then play out land. Um, can't just honestly cauldra here, but pretty close. Um, yeah. Honestly, we can attack with this guy first, though. And this guy... I'm um, trying to think. So if we go hammer here, put it there, it turns it into a 17. I'm, I'm cool. And I am playing a little bit quicker than I'd like. But expedition map, yeah, that's in play. And I'm not moving the, the hammer because Ugin, because the, we, since we shut off Blast Zone, Ugin and um, Ugin, Big Ugin, and I'm trying to think what else are their answers. Um, all is dust, and all is dust doesn't address this, and neither does Ugin. Yeah, okay. That's what we like to see. And let's see what we're doing for game three. I think I'm fine trimming a couple Sentinels on the draw for a couple Spell Pierce. We can always just go land pass and then Spell Pierce their Chalice. Um, it's not terrible. Kind of go from there. All right. Let's see. This hand is wildly unkeepable. Um, this hand is fine. Uh, so we don't want to bottom needle. I think we're bottoming hammer, weirdly. It's either hammer or stoneforge. Maybe it's stoneforge. Because stoneforge is a way to put in a hammer after it's, uh, after a chalice on one has come down, which feels pretty relevant. All right, opponent, start us off. Oh, man. All right, well, um, I think I'm actually going to needle here. Name Expedition Map. Okay. And pass. Hopefully I don't get incredibly punished. Looks like I'm getting incredibly punished. <laughs> yep. All right. It's fine. That's why we have the Stone Forge, right? It's rough. Um, let's go get a Cauldra. See if they have an answer to it. If they do, then they do. But if they don't, then we're in super good shape. Reality Smasher? Nah, this doesn't cast Reality Smasher. What am I talking about? Dismember. Boo. Yeah, I am getting incredibly punished for not holding the cheese. Eh, I'm, eh, not happy about it, but it's what it is. So the question is, were we supposed to hold up Spell Pierce? Probably because we knew the opponent was so all in on, um, on that plan, right? Okay, there we go. So we can march the Chalice, making sure to pay. Yeah. Um, I don't think we... Yeah, we do it now. Cast. And then... Now we just need to find a hammer. Yeah, no reason to block, right, opponent? Okay. I don't hate it. Good news is we do have a Karn covered with the Spell Pierce. The will turn, like, six Spell Pierce. I will take four here. No reason to block yet. Perfect. <laughs> Not really. I don't think there's a reason for me to peck in quite yet. And we'll block with the Ornithopter this time, I think. Oh, paying costs. What you got for me? What you got? I think we are actually supposed to take another four here. And I'll fetch out a second hollowed fountain, but this one will be tapped. Chalice on one. Are you paying, opponent? <laughs> yeah, you you got it. <laughs> That's fun. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, you love to see it. All right. Um, Urza Saga, Hammer, Stoneforge, Steel Shaper's Gift. I don't think I boarded any of those out either, right? All right. And so we will block with the Ornithopter this turn. Create a 1-1. One, one. I think I'm fine with that. We're not dead to that. Um, all right, so move to blocks, block here, block here. Still not dead. Um, are they dead? So we can 
Play Stone Forge off that bat. Animate, attack, hammer off the Stone Forge. Yeah, that should do it. Tapped out. Let's get a hammer. Not tapping the Ink Moth. Ink Moth and GG's. Unless they, you know, have Force of Vigor. Yep, there we go. All right, and uh, yeah, that's how you play against Eldrazi Tron, I guess. I don't know. It was a weird game. Uh, all three were kind of weird games, so <laughs> I'll see y'all in uh, in round four. Sweet. All right, we are back for round four, currently 3-0. and uh, We're on the play, and yeah, we have Giver into Stoneforge with double Saga. This hand's great. And I'm going to fetch with Arid Mesa first instead of Windswept Heath because um, if I can't play it for a while, I'd rather look at the Windswept Heath art. These are uh, highly technical decisions. What can I say? Um, and I don't know a world in which we are... Uh, okay, cool, cool. And so we're going to do this because this way we threaten multiple things. Ooh, do we have like a spell snare? Yes, let's go get a Cauldra. Whee! And no attacks because we want to make sure that Stoneforge Mystic doesn't die. This is the Bant one. I'm still learning uh, Noble Hire. Um, yeah, I mean, we give up a Construct this way, but fine. And do we just put the Cauldra in? We probably do. Fetching now? Okay, sure. Okay, so this is probably like an Ephemerate deck, but I, I'm surprised that it's an Ephemerate deck when they don't have um, Yorian. That feels off. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a reason to play the Ornithopter. I don't think there is. So we're just gonna pass. What we got? Deputy of Detention, sure. So they hit the Cauldra. Okay, so yeah, it's it's an ETB deck. <laughs> got it. Um, Yeah, so I will make a Construct here. Um, I think I will get a Hammer. Yeah, we'll just get a Hammer, it real simple. And yeah, pass the turn. I should have probably gotten a, um, a Hollowed Fountain with one of these, but I'm not super worried about it either because we can, we can always just Stone Forge it in. Okay, so we just go Cigar to Zaid here. And then let's uh, activate this, put in Chip, put it on the Ornithopter. Fortunately, cannot cast that thing, but whatever. Do get a fairly free attack here with our Construct. This is a matchup where Giver's got to be like pretty nuts, I would presume. This is also a matchup where I'm like pretty happy that uh, might as well just do this then. <laughs> uh, this is a matchup where I'm happy to have the extra Hushbringers as well because... They have a lot of ETBs. And I know the Soul Herder deck is picking up, but I just, I don't know uh, what the exact configuration of that deck is. Uh, it still feels wrong to play without Yorian, but who knows? Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Wall of Blossoms, yeah. Do we have Ephemerate here? That'd be pretty good. I will I will take it. Boldly no blocks. Um, So definitely making a Construct here. And then very tempted to get this Shadow Spear here. There, right. Um... And I would really like to keep deploying spells. Nope, but we don't have spells. <laughs> All right, crack in for eight. Take zero, I kill both their walls. I gain eight, cool with this, and pass turn. You got, you got a snaky poo. Snaky poo. All right, let me do anything but F6 here. Yep, All right. This is definitely the soul herder. Ewit getting a wall, sure, wall in. And I am tempted to not block because if they have, because I don't want them to be able to rebuy it with Eternal Witness. If they have Ephemerate, yeah, I think I'm fine just taking this hit. Okay, so Ink Moth off the top first. Paladin, um, yeah, put it here. Crack in with both Constructs. Trade off, I'm fine. Uh, but this is, okay, so four, five, five toughness. Okay, order it like that. Animate, cool. All right, onboard tricks, get them. <laughs> All right, good talk, good talk. So this is a matchup where I know they do have the Evoke Elementals, right? Like they have Solitude, they probably have Subtlety, um, but I don't want um, Lavinia because they're go they're probably just gonna hard cast them. Um, now Hushbringer is a gigantic beating and I'm a huge fan. Um, and like probably some skills are reasonable, like two seems fine um i kind of want more because if we're able to protect a hushbringer the game's over not bad uh, i don't think we're really about the seal shapers gift life and asper sentinel seems pretty bad uh <laughs> considering their entire deck is creatures um and then m knight Ronda's mem knight also seems pretty terrible um so maybe we can keep like some gifts probably trim like a drum call it a day they're probably a kataki deck too right yes. Yeah, just play a Hushbringer, protect the Hushbringer, call it a day. I don't hate that. All right, let's see how game two goes. 
All right, we are back for game two, and we have Giver of Runes into Hushbringer. So I will snap keep this hand. And no ramp on one. Okay, well, I was considering getting a basic planes, but since we drew the, the chip, much more. Obviously, the cauldron is not my favorite to keep in a seven, but it's also not too bad. Okay, Hushbringer. Let it resolve. Don't do not do anything, opponent. Just let it happen. <laughs> just, just let it happen, please. Revoking it right now, and then ephemerating it. Sure. Yep. All right. What'd they pitch? They pitched a Soul Herder. All right, that's fair. And that card doesn't do anything currently. Um, so now the Ephemerate is exiled because they chose not to cast it. Um, and now we get to hold up Blacksmith's skill. Uh, I will decline to block. I know. Bold of me. Glass Pullman. Solitude. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, so I think we're just going Guard is Aid and Ginger Brute and I'll attack. We have the, the uh, Blacksmith skill to protect. Yep. You get a card. The Noble Hierarch. Sure. Hmm. I think we're supposed to take six here because I think as long as Hushbringer is in play, I... it is awkward that Reality Chip won't trigger with this Guard is Aid in play, but that's fine because I think it's just going to be a blocker anyway. I should have attacked there with the Hushbringer for sure. Okay. Attacking with both. You got it. Yep. And it won't trigger. Another Hushbringer on top, you say. Okay. Well... Now I don't hate this. And then we can skill Ginger Brute. Eat your dude. Your deck doesn't do anything <laughs> with a Hushburger in play. I mean, I know I knew that. Big oof. Um, don't care about playing that. I think I'd rather just have this as an 04 wall. So we will pass the turn. We can safely it because they only have one other snow permanent. Hmm, car. So you just trade off with the solitude here. I don't think I want to take the hit. And don't need to animate. And we're just going to put a, uh, I think we're just going to put a hammer on the ginger brute. And then make it unblockable. Seems pretty good. Yes. Um, whack, whack. Still don't have death touch, but I think that's okay. So they'll trade off. And assuming they don't have anything too crazy, we can still just play another Hushbringer next turn. Because we have the backup, I wasn't as worried about it. Okay, draw a card. Oh four, jellyfish doing some work. Yep, I will. I will take two points of damage. I wouldn't hate drawing a stone forge either after this. Ashbringer, do you resolve? Uh, sure. Pitching. Yeah, you you got it. I will gain eleven. Okay, and uh, no reason to attack. Really, we could attack, and then if they block, we could turn it into a 4-4. Four, four. Meddling Mage, what are we naming here? And so now that we've stalled out a little bit, we can also start moving the chip around. Probably name Hammer? You either name Hammer or Stoneforge. Yeah, okay. Colossus Hammer, totally reasonable name. But the reality is this, this Pure Seal Paladin also just... They still only have... Um, actually, have the Ace Fang, that's fine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, Uh. yeah, Hushbringer. Real good against the mono Enter the Battlefield trigger deck who knew um love that card that's why sorry not a, not a whole lot of interesting things happened in that game game one was pretty pretty weird but uh yeah anyway i'll see y'all in round five see if we can have that trophy all right well this hand's missing white mana so we're gonna mulligan this hand has a saga and an equipper and a kill with ink moth i mean we keep this probably bottom the hollowed fountain yeah, the drama. Famous last words. All right, googly. Let's let's see what they have for us. They got to keep seven. I dream of. Okay, burn. Yep, yep. Well, I like the ginger brute here. Okay, just gonna get a planes, of course. Play out aid, and we're also gonna play out memnite and ornithopter here, because that way the uh, the eidolon doesn't just murder us. Because against burn, like there's very little reason to hold this ornithopter in my hand. They're probably not going to just shoot it out of the sky. So next turn, we play the Saga, and then the following turn, probably the Ink Moth, make a Construct. And I don't think we're blocking here. Okay, so they played their land, so I think it means that's less likely that they have a, um, a light up the stage. All right, yep, take one. They're lighting up the stage now. Lava Dart. Oh, it's Prowess. Okay, cool. Honestly, and they don't actually have a way to flash that. Um, and because they've had to use so many spells on my creatures, I'm, uh, I'm more inclined to... Uh, just go a little bit slower with the Urza Saga instead of the Ink Moth. Um, especially since if they have a land, like a mountain, then they're just holding up the interaction for Ink Moth anyway. Uh, I will decline to block. Take one point of Lumomancer. You got it. Okay. Well, we're definitely playing Ink Moth. And I think we're playing Ginger Brute and putting a hammer on it. Because they don't have a mountain to sack to the dart. It's so close. I think I'm going to do so. 
Yeah, yeah, just keep it simple. We could also just straight hit them for... Mm, they could have gut shot, right? Yeah. I feel like there's very little reason not to just do this. And I'm just going to play this out as well. And now we're just going to go get a Shadow Spear. But we just make their attacks so incredibly bad by just leaving the Stone Forge back. And I think if we get to connect with a Shadow Spear, that the game's over anyway. Okay. So tap to the can dart. Something to note. Okay. Are we going to dart the Ginger Brute and then Ground Rift? That'd be pretty good. Uh, me. Okay. I don't think I'm dead though. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So three total. This is a very specific scenario. Okay. So my creatures can't block. Uh, I'm dead. We need one turn. Yep. Dang. All right. Yep. Eight, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah. Super cool. <laughs> Dang, what a beating. All right. Um, yeah, but like if, if we had attacked, that wouldn't have gotten there either. So post board, March is very good. And Pierce seems pretty good. Um, maybe some skills. I think Esper Sentinel is okay. Memnite is truly, truly terrible though. Um, I don't think Ornithopter is great either. Um, and I think we are not supposed to have Cauldron. I don't hate like a couple blacksmith skills um ginger brute does gain three life but i don't know that that's the trick i like esper sentinel obviously a lot more on the play so i think that's fine but chip does not seem like where we want to be um actually i think i'd rather keep Paldra than the chip in case they do go like really grindy, I can see a world where that happens. And so this is a matchup that I actually haven't played that much of, especially the version with like Ground Rift. Um, I know that's shocking. <laughs> haven't haven't played much of the uh, the weird prowess very. But um, this is my initial thought. Um, so we can go turn one, Shock Hollowed Fountain, Springleaf Drum. Next turn we can go Ginger Brute plus Stone Forge. I don't hate it. The saga is really good. The cauldra is sneaky. I love me a sneaky cauldra. It is, it is close though. I will acknowledge that it is close. That was a, that was a good play by them though. Didn't really want to draw the other one, but okay, here we are. <laughs> and let's play a stone forge out. And I think we are getting the shadow spear here because if they kill the saga, then I will one thousand percent be wanting that shadow spear back. <laughs> I will not block. They light up the stage here. Mm. Probably not. Play to land. You have Magus Elemental. You got it. Does Stoneforge live? Stoneforge live. Pretty exciting. All right. And I could just play out the Shadow Spear, but I don't think that's correct. Um, I think we are supposed to just pass here. So we can potentially make a Construct, um, but what we were probably doing is putting in Cauldra and uh, sacking the Ginger Brute, if I had to guess. It is nice that when there's a construct that I can pop out, they can't really um, ground rift my team because we always have at least one blocker left up. Of course, ground rift is a sorcery, I think. I'm just gonna sorcery. <laughs> Someone has three cards in hand, three dudes in play. Well, I'm going to do this while we can. If they do want to use a lot of stuff on the Cauldra, fine. Like, I'm not happy that it's dying. We do get to block for free here. Okay. Pretty sure we want to get rid of the Niv Magus. And then, yeah, I just think that's what we're doing. Certainly the scarier of the two cards. And we can still, of course, sack the Ginger Brute because the, the germ makes the extra mana. The food golem can, can gain us some life here if needed. If they just had the one Soul Scar and say this was like a, um, a Monastery Swift Spear, I would be blocking the Soul Scar. Fight as one. That's fine. Still still dead. Um, okay. Lava Dart me. Okay. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> We're flashing Lava Darty again. Like, I don't think this is going to work how they want it to. Mutagenic. Okay. It's five plus five plus six. That's 11. I feel like we are supposed to. Jeez. Probably don't have a choice. So 15. So six plus seven is 13. I don't, I don't think it's worth getting that low against this deck. We get to eat their, their Niv Magus because of course it just gets exiled by the effect. And then we take a million and go to five, but they are empty handed. Nothing in the yard that they can play. Um, ooh, that's a good one. Okay. So we'll put that first, that resolve. I will, I mean, we don't have to, but I don't hate. So we are probably going to play and equip the Shadow Spear, right? So if that's the plan, we float, equip, and then we still can't make a... Um, I think we make the construct because I don't want to shock in the Hollowed Fountain either. And so here we get probably an Ornithopter just as another body. 
All right, let's crack in for five. And they need very specific cards here. Just trying to think what they could draw. I don't think anything beats a spell pierce. This is the big is the big part. Okay, that's a good sign. Yep. Yeah. All right. So they went they went real hard. Um, Calder was pretty good. Um, wonder if we won. My gut still says probably not. I didn't see much interaction. Could bring in the extra skills. Uh, we probably don't want the mantle, right? <laughs> probably. Eckhart's probably not going to be doing a lot of keeping things around. And we could play another Ornithopter or another Esper Sentinel. Hate Esper Sentinel because it does make them kill that. It's so bad against Dart and we're on the draw though. So maybe we just keep the, the, uh, the extra Thopter. I think that's fine. Yeah, I'm cool with this. Let's see how it works. Um, and when you're in in points like this where you're just like, oh, do I have this, this or this? The reality is it doesn't matter that much. It's one card. Um, you probably won't even draw it because you're not playing a Xerox deck in an older format. Uh, so this hand is quite good. We get to lead with Sentinel and then we probably just shock in the Hollowed Fountain to play Sentinel and then turn two, we can go Hammer Hold Up Skill, probably. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Lumomancer is a good one. Um, I think we're going to want to represent blue mana at least. That and pass the turn. Obviously, um, <laughs> aid would be like the nut draw, but might not happen. I will take. <laughs> I I hope it's a it's a oh light of the sage. Okay, cool. March is March is a great draw. March is a great draw. Quite happy. So now we can. Go Marsh Flats, go get a Plains, probably play out the Hammer. Um, I don't think we're blocking anything, so I'm also fine just getting in there. Holding up March is really good. Yeah, I'm fine waiting a turn since they don't have anything going on. Still nothing, nothing it is. Because now we don't have to pitch the skill or the pure steel to cast the March on the Lumabancer. Um, so I do think that I March here. Just use my mana. If they have like a protection. Um, so I think we are supposed to do this. Let's get a lava dart. This way they have to use a second spell unless they want to pay three. Yeah. So we get to draw a card. They take an extra two points of damage. Nope, can't can't pay for three opponent. <laughs> okay. Now we get to pretty freely throw the paladin out. The second one made it a lot easier. All right. And so we have ink moth double hammer pretty close pyroclasm y yeah all right cool i do appreciate the white border pyroclasm like that's that's classy genuinely love love the white border <laughs> oh giver is a nice one for sure um and then we probably play out definitely play out a hammer i don't know that we play out the second one though so next turn we can play paladin hammer then animate that's not a kill though so this out now that was that was a really bad mistap but it is what it is we are pressuring their life total, as you, as they say. Okay, draw a card. That's what we like to see. I, so they don't have a threat, is my understanding here. Uh, Lava Dart is was fine against Esper Sentinel, but that was about it. Yep. So Giver's probably dead here. Are they casting another dart? Giver down. Giver down. Two cards. So we're going to play the Paladin, animate the Ink Moth, and then move the Hammer to the Paladin. Like, do they have Bolt? I like, I like putting them to the test right here. Need to do this. Have to do it like this because they can just dart the ink moth in response. Um, and then we don't have metal craft. I'll put that there too. And then here. And now they dart, but now we have a... Yeah, sure. But now we have a 22-22 paladin. Your go, opponent. And they had to sacrifice two lands to do that. I will block. Now I will block. I'm making so many bold lines. I'll block your 0-1 with my 22-22. I will attack for 22 points of damage. Yep. Blocking makes sense. And I'm going to hold the Marsh Flats fetch just because I don't think I'll... I might not even have to fetch it, and so paying the extra point of life is not super relevant. I'm probably not going to need double blue at any point this game. All right, so I'm guessing they have nothing. Do they have nothing? I hope so. All right. Where? Okay. Only take 12. Woo! Did we... Was that the match? Did we 5-0? Did we do it? Did we break the curse? That's pretty exciting. I've been playing a lot of Pioneer recently. The format's a thing. There we go. 5-0. All right, <laughs> not not gonna complain too much. Um, so let's go back to the list. Okay, so we went 5-0, losing two games. Um, now that you can lose that many more. But, so we beat Red White Prowess. Um, there's a Murktide deck in there. There was the Bant 
Soul Herder deck. Um, honestly, pretty good spread. We obviously didn't face any four color. We did face Burn, actual Burn. Yeah, so it was Burn, Murktide, and Red White Prowess. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the deck, and we were incredibly rewarded for having the, uh, the other, the extra copy of Hushbringer. Yeah, so it was... Etron, that was the other deck. That was a weird match. But yeah, um, so I think March showed how good it is. It's very flexible. Um, it's also the removal spell that is best in the mirror. It's it's stopping Urza Saga is so important. It's also incredibly good against Titan, which a lot of people have been having trouble with. Um, but Hushbringer is such a good card right now because there are so many just people playing a million ETBs, the Yorian deck. Like Lavinia is good against four color, but Specifically, the version with more Risen Reefs, I'd rather have Hushbringer. Um, so if your meta has a ton of Hushbringer and that kind of effect, I don't hate kind of doing what I did for my local meta with the RCQ where I moved a Blacksmith skill to the main, uh, cut the Memnite, and then put the fourth Hushbringer in there. And then I turned a Lavinia into a Teferi just to uh, kind of even things out. People have been playing more Chalice of the Void. Um, so playing one to fairy also totally reasonable. But yeah, I mean, I'm super happy with the deck. Obviously, you know, you can't complain too much. Um, it's great. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, continuing to update the Patreon. I appreciate y'all's patience on that. But yeah, right now you don't need relic. That card can can get out. You don't need it. And then uh, you know, just just beat them with with your normal plan. Kind of go from there. But yeah. Hope everyone's having a good time. Good luck at your RCQs if you're playing them, you know, wherever you are. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.